वेलकम गाइस दिस इज जॉर्डस अगेन अगेन वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग आवर नंबर 2 ट्यूटोरियल 1 सेशन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड प्रीटी मच लाइक ऑल दोस थिंग्स रिक्वायर्ड इन नंबर बट सम ऑफ दिस थिंग्स आर लेफ्ट सो वी विल डिस्कस दैट टू इन टुडे सेशन एंड मोस्ट प्रोबब्ली वी विल बी वी विल बी टचिंग अ बिट अबाउट पांडास सो Yeah, let's get started without doing any kind of delays. So, yeah, I will start with uh, NumPy uh, dimensions was done in last class, I guess. Where is the dimensions? Yeah, so this will give you the dimensions of the array. I hope I have explained you everything about this NumPy. So, in the previous class, I explained you uh, what are this, uh, how to import this NumPy, uh, how to create your array in numpy how to check which one is faster numpy normal processing is faster and then i explained you how to create a random uh, uh, like random arrays and also explained you how to create your random int arrays and uh, some ones and zeros then check your dimensions and all get the sum sum of uh, using axes so similarly you can get i guess uh, you will get some uh, what all these things are there so there are many other functions which you can check it out in numpy documentations and uh, it would really help you if you check that numpy documentation and in case you are building some projects in numpy uh, then that that documentation is a must thing so Okay, so then uh, we'll see numpy argmax or argmin. So next function is numpy argmax, and uh, how to see that? First, we'll connect this thing, uh, that collab link. Uh, I have shared you. So the guys who joined later, for them, I have shared you the videos playlist, and you can check all this tutorial and understand how to use collab. And if you don't understand, you can ping me also. So and uh, yeah, so. Up, up to last class i have covered how to create an array so we'll create an array for today so we'll create a random array so we'll copy this thing and uh, we'll create array 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 looks cool so we'll create array np is not defined because i have not done import numpy as np so that is must and after that you have to do array equal to np dot random dot random this will create your array and uh, now the next function is and numpy dot argmax uh, so how to do that is np dot arg max and inside that you can pass you a pass array so basically this will give you the uh, position of the maximum element so here you can see the position of that uh, maximum that max element is third uh, i guess which one is this yeah this is the maximum element and it's third so it gives you the position of that maximum element and similarly you can do numpy dot min so numpy will give you the eight element 1 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so i guess you can see here this is the minimum uh, value of that array so that's why it has given you the minimum value and with this arg thing arg uh, that means you will get the position of the maximum and minimum so it's required sometimes when you have to find out the position of the maximum minimum element of an array so that place you can use numpy dot argmax and argmin so argmax or argmin so you can use it for that purpose note that the underlying computation is the c compute it's it's do it's done in c so dot numpy does it it's a wrapper around c so it helps you convert your python code into c code and then runs after that so that's what uh the next part after doing these things and all we can go to what is the next part let's see uh so numpy dot mean so you can do array dot 
mm -hmm. so it will give you the mean mean value of all those element in this array so you can get mean uh, median so median doesn't works uh, mean median mode i guess i forgot what's the uh, mean median standard deviation uh, median should work ideally uh, okay for numpy i don't know it, whether it's there or not for uh, pandas it's there so we'll go to pandas after that i'll show you how to find out the mod and median and standard median uh, standard deviations and all those things which is required in case you are doing some kind of stock predictions and all uh, so yeah next thing about numpy what is there left print indices okay 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 mm. what this does let me see Area inside area. So, what's next? Let's see. Ah, so we'll talk about the uh, like masking and arithmetic operations. So, uh, so what is arithmetic operations? Basically, you want to do some kind of operations in the array, so you can do it very easily by two. So you can see directly it can divide by two and give you the result so this kind of operation is called as arithmetic operations you can do in the array itself you don't have to iterate through entire array in order to do such kind of operations and uh, this operations helps you really when you want to so if i multiply each element by two then yeah so yeah that that way you can multiply each element by two and uh, you can also divide so for dividing you can use yeah so these are arithmetic operations you can directly implement on your uh, python array so that's what you can do in uh, numpy there are other things you can do you can actually check out the numpy documentations uh, but for uh, our uh, purpose like for our purpose we need this much only in future if you need you can refer the documentation you can go 1.18 module and check the documentation there itself you will find all those important user guides references so you can go to references and you can get all these references whatever we have done so that will be there and uh, yeah you can check all this uh, references are there any references you want you can check it here so for my case if i do median uh, you can get numpy dot median yeah, I mean, you can use numpy.median axis. Okay, so for using median, you have to use np.median. And, and yeah, that will give you your median. So there are other functions which can be used for your own purpose. So you can just check the documentations and use it for your own purpose. But for our, for our, uh, for our application wise, we don't need that much of numpy. So that this much of numpy is enough for you. Uh, now the most important thing that we'll jump into is like pandas why pandas is important because in case you are uh, dealing with ordered data ordered in the sense if your data has a common uh, column name and a, uh, and it's structured properly then you need pandas so that's where the need of pandas comes and uh, we'll go around uh, importing data so sample data is there I don't know what this data has, but uh, we'll copy the path and we'll use pandas. So for using pandas, you can import it directly because uh, your collab environment already has pandas installed. Pandas as query. Uh, pandas has a very uh, important, like it's a, it has a very useful data structure that is data frame. So what is a data frame? Data frame is basically, it's a, uh, two dimensional array where the first where the first uh, like 
okay two dimensional array or it's a kind of a table so you generally create create your own table right so data frame is a kind of a table so how how does this data frame looks we'll see in this tutorial so yeah so first thing we'll import the data how to import the data is like data frame you can give any name and pd dot read csv yeah so this way you can create the data frame from a csv data and you can check the data by head uh, i'll tell you what is head basically uh, when you uh, when you see the data uh, it has many data so if you see the data you see the shape of the data uh, it has 3000 rows and nine columns so every rows cannot be printed in a single uh, place right so you can't create uh, you can print entire every rows in in this console so that's why you have to pre print the first five element for that you can use head and if you want to print the last five element you can use tail so for tail you can use pail these are the last elements that are used that, that that are there in that row so this csv is a simple data so basically we'll use our own csv that's mounted drive mounting drive is very simple go to this folder i can click on mount drive and it's mounted so you'll refresh it and you will see that drive is already mounted okay it's mounting yeah it's mounted now now you can go to my drive and uh, you can go to what is that stocks yeah we'll uh, we'll re uh, we'll do stock market predictions so we'll copy the path data frame data frame dot shape it will give you the shape of that data frame and it's pretty much simple you can see that there are two it, there are like 252000 uh, rows so printing all those rows will be really difficult so that's why uh, we'll be using head head will print only the top 5 and in case you want to get the top 100 so you can use head 100 so this will give you the top 100 you can see all the top 100 data are there and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. It has an open, high, low, close. So leave all those things. What are open, high, low, close? We'll be discussing later. But yeah, the idea behind head and tail, like you can get the top five and last five. So that's where the uh, importance of head and tail comes. Uh, next thing is like if you want to find out median mode and uh, all those things, uh, all those statistics. So you can use like that. Uh, for data frame and all, if you want to access the data or access any one rows, uh, any one column, so it's very simple. You have to do this data just like you do in dictionary. So you have to do data frame. So you will access the open open value. Yeah, so you can see you can uh, you can see the open value, and uh, what we'll do is take out the mean of that open value. That means the average of all those open values. So basically, what the open value means, whenever the stock market trades happen, so at that time, whenever in uh, whenever it opens up, what is the value of that uh, stock price? So that is the open value, and. Uh, and when it closes, the stock market closes, that is the close value. And during that time, time span from open to close, what is the high value or the highest value and the lowest value? So you got an idea, right? When a stock market opens, so open value means when the stock market opens, the price at what it opens, it's known as the open value. And the price at what it closes, it's, it's known as the close value. Or the stock market closes at 3.15 or, uh, yeah, I guess uh, 3.30, 3.30, I guess. So at that time, whatever the value is, it's close value. And uh, high is the highest value during that time. So from morning uh, 9.15 to uh, 3.30. So that is the uh, 
time span when the stock trades happens and the highest value is this and lowest value is this and the number of stock has been traded so that is the volume so yeah i got i, I pretty much you got an idea behind that so now we will see the mean of that so you can see the mean of this uh with this you can check the mean means the average value of all those stocks is 2293 and uh, the open value is higher than the 293 so yeah the stock prices you can see and you can get the idea whether the stock prices fell or it it rose so yeah mm, next thing uh, we'll find out the median. And uh, that's how you find out the median and mode. So you get the median mode, everything. Okay, all right, so you can find out the median mod of that entire row. So this is the entire uh, so entire column. So you want to find out the median of entire column. You can find out like this. And if you want to find out the median, you can find out like this. And uh, what else you can find out? Okay, so the next thing I'll show you is uh, Okay, this a little bit theory. What and uh, so I created the notes. I'll show you show you the notes. So basically, this is the theory part. I don't want to cover the theory part. Okay, these are all those Bollinger bands. Uh, so once the mean, median, and standard deviation is covered, so this part is not required. Uh, yeah, so it has an inbuilt function of plotting that. So if you don't know about NumPy, it takes a dependencies of, sorry, if you don't know about the uh, pandas, it takes a dependencies of NumPy and matplotlib. So if you want to draw some graph, you can easily draw using this data frame. So my data frame is data frame. So data frame dot open. I guess this works. So you can get the idea uh, how the graph looks. Uh, basically, you can easily plot that uh, data using this. And uh, you can see the price variation. You, uh, you can see the price variation. The price variation along this axis yeah the price variation along this axis and this is the time i guess so or the number of values so this is the price variation that's going on and uh, yeah so you can easily plot graph using that and and give it a level rolling mean yeah or a plot level okay what is it doing once again let me check uh okay 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 average middle mean so start standard deviation that's fine that's fine rolling mean moving average rolling mean level error plot legends rolling mean okay 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 all right so the thing is you you can create a rolling mean and so what is rolling mean what is the rolling mean basically it's it's like a uh, mean only so if you see the mean uh, that is computed here it's the mean of entire column right so it's a yeah all right so today we'll learn about this band uh, this is a rolling band and how this band is created and all those things so uh, initially i have already explained how to create those mean median mode so in case you have data, stock data, it has open, high, low, close, OHLC, uh, OHLC 
uh, this known as OHLC data, OHLCB data. So you can get this data in the internet itself. Maybe not minute wise, you can get this day wise. So yeah, so once you get this data, how to analyze this data and then do trading based on those data. So it's really simple and I could understand that. Uh, so uh, very simple how to uh, do that is like you have to find out this rolling thing. What is this rolling basically? A rolling is kind of a uh, finding out the means, finding out the average of that value by taking the first three value or the first n number of values. So you can see this is a window or a uh, window is kind of a range of values that you will be taking for uh, finding out this mean value. So here you can see if you see the data rolling mean, see three windowed mean, I mean three, uh, th uh, you take three values and then find out the mean of that three values. So you take these three values, open value of these three, like 319.75, 319.70 and 319.90. So you take this three value and divide by three, you will get this value. So this is the mean or the average value. Uh, who is texting me? Okay, we have Sashwat wants to get in. Okay, so, but not showing. Okay, so, so there is no one else. Yeah. Uh, so basically you take this three values and then you find out the mean or the average value of that. And then similarly, you find out the standard deviation. What is the formula of standard deviation? If you guys remember from your, uh, uh, if from, from your, from your uh, like 11, 12th, if you have done statistics, so uh, probability and statistics, you might remember standard deviation. So standard deviation is nothing. It's a very, uh, it's this formula using which you find out the variance of that uh, square of that variance. So. Uh, basically, standard deviation is the uh, this. If you calculate this mean, so if you calculate this mean, this mean uh, minus this mean square uh, min minus this thing square. So mean square minus this thing like three one nine square minus this thing square. So and uh, yeah, that is uh, mean and. Uh, the, and sorry, that is standard deviation, and that's how you create the standard for for our purpose. If you want to get standard deviation, rolling standard deviation, the same way you create the mean, the same way you have to create the standard deviation. So for creating a mean, rolling mean, you have to use this function. So as you can see, this is remove this. This is how you create the rolling mean. So you have to take the open value. So you have to take the entire row by doing this. So this using this square brackets, you can access the entire row so you can using the square brackets you can access the entire uh, column of open values this is the entire column of open values and then tell it that we are doing a rolling mean so you just roll it by giving it to three window size as i have already mentioned this is the window or the number of uh, number of elements you want to consider so for taking out the mean and you do it a center false because if you do center through this value will shift in center so so that's why you do the center false. This is uh, this is center false, so it comes below. So you can actually calculate these three means one, two, three means of these three, and then put the value here itself. Then the first element and the last element will be none. So that way you can do your data centric. I mean centered. You can do your data centered. So but then we don't want it centered. So we will create a centered false and. Then you'll do dot mean. Similarly, you can do for standard deviation as a dot standard and store it in a new column. So that new column name is three windowed mean. Okay, so you can create a new column very easily. Initially, there was no column, and after creating that new column, you'll find this data. And uh, after creating this data, you can store it inside this column. Very simple, right? Uh, you don't have to calculate in hand because computer is doing this for you. Now you, now you can understand that uh, why this computer are really useful because if you know in the 10th exam we have to do these things by our hand itself and in exam also they used to give us only 10 values and we have to calculate standard deviation, mean, median, variance, all those things and that used to be very, very really tough for us 
a small uh, a small uh, error in our calculation may lead in the entire uh, error in, will lead in the error in the entire entire uh, calculation so so but in computer you can do you can do it really easily so you can understand that it is doing mean calculation for entire how many data are there it is calculating me uh, median standard deviation for uh, how many so the, you can see there are 250000 data and uh, it is calculating uh, mean for that and standard deviation for that and it's doing in a small short period of time because underlying this numpy is used so that's why it is very fast and once the standard deviation is calculated we'll create a bollinger band uh, what is a bollinger band bollinger band is nothing it's a band across your stock price so if your standard deviation is sigma then the band is like uh, upper upper band will be the mean plus 2 sigma right so it's very really simple what is your bollinger band you create a mean and you just do mean plus 2 sigma that is the bollinger band and sigma is your standard deviation so for that we have to, done this so you can see so you can do pretty much arithmetic in a very simple way so you are just taking three windowed mean and adding it up with it with a double of that standard deviation so that's how you create the bollinger band and in stock market this bollinger band is really important uh, because if the buy prices is less than this bollinger band uh, sorry if the stock price is less than this bollinger band and uh, not only this if you see in the whatever your trading platform you use uh, in case you are using zerodha so for me i i use some kind of uh, not trading platform but a fixed protocol using which i do all those trading but you can use zerodas and all those things fixed protocol are directly connected to stock markets so using that you can do stock trading but for that you need special permissions and all but in case you have zerodas and all if uh, in case you have zerodas or uh, tata has recently come out with this uh, upstocks let's go to upstocks upstocks.com and uh, you will go to pro web so there you will see there are multiple charts so let's go to pro web so yeah okay close so basically if you go to nifty or some data you can actually display a uh, bowling of bands so there will be some views so you can search for bowling of bands you can see the stock prices whenever it goes beyond the band it will definitely go up of that band so that's why that if it goes beyond the band you have to definitely buy that stock stock so that is the funda behind this and you can write a code in the next tutorial i'll explain you how to write a functions using which you can trigger this buy and sell uh, buy and sell function so yeah whenever it goes beyond this bollinger band you have to buy and whenever you goes above this bollinger band you have to sell so that's how you create your bollinger band using this rolling function and it's simple is uh, very simple it is so you have to write uh, rolling and then give it a window in the center and then do whatever you want. You want standard deviation, mean, median, mode, whatever you want. You can create that, and then you can do arithmetic to uh, to find out the upper band and the lower band. Store it in a column, upper and lower, and then do this plotting. Plotting is really simple. Open, upper, lower. Give it in an array inside this data frame and do head. That means I want the top hundred, and you can do it at top ten thousand also. I will give you a plot of that also, but it is much more smaller, so you can't understand anything out of this. So you get the top hundred, and you see this Bollinger band is created. So upper is this pink one, lower is this green one, and then blue one is the uh, open price. And whenever it is going below that, you have to buy it, and whenever it is going above that, you have to sell it. So that's how you create your Bollinger band, and you have written your first algorithms. So, so yeah. I, ha I hope this has given you an idea how to do some kind of analysis on the data sets using NumPy, uh, NumPy and Pandas. So in future, I'll explain you much more complex uh, functions in Pandas, which will be useful for you in future. So yeah, I hope this is uh, very 
Yeah, this tutorial is like really helpful for you. And in case you are finding difficulty with this data sets, I, I can shift to other data sets, other standard data sets like uh, like Titanic data sets or uh, IDIS data sets or some other data sets which are standard. But then if by doing that, you won't get any um, benefit out of this because application of that is really less. In this case, stock data set, you can actually use it for your own trading purpose. And uh, you can write your own algorithms and do trading in our money. So yeah, that's why I'm using this data sets. I hope this help, helps you out. And in future, you will uh, understand other functionalities of Pandas. Uh, see, up, like tomorrow at 8 o'clock, we'll have this session, continuations. All right. Create a data frame and all I have explained, right? So you can... Uh -huh, that, yeah. yeah, so that you can create. You can see the first five variables uh, or the first five rows by doing dot head. And then do check the last five very, uh, rows by doing tail, and then you can find out the mean through the entire row. So mean, you know, guys, right? You are already, you have already uh, did course on eleven, twelve. So you might know what is mean, median, and mode. So if you don't know what mean, median, or mode, uh, you can like actually uh, have to refer that in internet. And uh, yeah, it's very important and. So, though using this mean, median, and mode command, uh, uh, like these functions, you can find out the mean of entire row, and the median of entire row, and the uh, sorry, yeah, entire column and entire column, and mode also. Mode is also like num the value which is much more repeated. So yeah, the mode of entire column. So that's how you create the mean, median, mode. Uh, this graph I will come back later. But now, right now, if you want to create a rolling mean. Uh, rolling mean or rolling median or rolling mode. So basically, you have to uh, see. Uh, you have to use this command. That is this dot rolling. So what is rolling? Basically, you take first first three L, uh, uh, first three uh, element uh, first three rows, and uh, you add it up and then divide by three. So you receive this, and you write note it down because these two don't have any values because this doesn't. Before this, there is no two values. So I have put window equal to three. So there should be three values for calculating the mean, right? So after three values only, it calculated the mean. So once it calculated the mean, you can create the standard deviation. You know how to create the standard deviation. If you don't know, have the uh, notes for that. So, so where is standard deviation? So yeah, mean is the average, median is the middle of that all sorted and standard deviation is the square of the variance of the root so if you don't know about this you can actually google it out and this is a little bit of statistics uh, you can learn from the google and uh, you can create this mean median uh, mean and the standard deviation rolling standard deviation is like you take three these three values and create the standard deviation so using computer you can do it very fastly and uh, once the standard deviation is created you we have to make a rollinger uh, bollinger band bollinger band is nothing it's a mean plus Two of twice of standard deviation, or uh, like so you can see, it's a mean. So you are adding up mean plus twice of that standard deviation. So if this is the stock price, then this is the mean, and uh, this is the standard uh, plus that mean plus twice of that standard deviation. This is the Bollinger band, and uh, the whenever the price goes below by uh, below that Bollinger band, you have a buy signal. That means you have to buy the stock price because the stock price immediately it will go up because the momentum. Uh, you have to check two, three more parameters. There is like many other, like you can check three, four more parameters and then buy that. Uh, yeah, but there is one, um, one Bollinger, John Bollinger actually told that you can use this for stock market trading. So if it is below that, you can uh, buy and above that you can sell. So that's how you do stock market trading. There are other algorithms I'll explain you later, but yeah. So basically I could have done the exp uh, this data analytics in uh, some kind of Titanic data sets or like uh, Housing data set, but uh, I felt like that that all you do, you won't have any applications in real life. So that's why I choose to, uh, I choose for doing these things into a stock market. And this is a real time data I have pulled in from uh, I pulled in from uh, like a stock uh, stock market. So uh, this is the real time data of SBI stock. So you can see I have uh, so. This is a minute wise data. It's not a day wise data. It's a minute wise data. So per minute trade, so it's a minute wise data where the the variations are, you can see it's a minute wise. So, so by using this, you can actually plot it. So you just tell them what all columns you want to plot. So 
open upper and lower so upper upper band and lower band once you plot that upper band and lower band you can uh, using algorithm or you can i'll show you in the later classes how to use apply functions and you can find out the point where you can buy or you can sell so yeah i i hope this uh, session is pretty much informative for you i this was just a small part like 1% of the total sessions so you just uh, if you don't understand i'll cover it once again in the next session i'll do a review kind of thing again uh, uh yeah i'll if you have any doubt you can ping me and uh, uh, by looking at this don't go and buy start buying or selling in stock market this is just a small demo uh, don't start immediately so yeah with this i hope you get an